K40 Free Fam and Sugar Free Squad. How are y'all? We are here um, with day 14. Can you believe that we are two weeks into our fasting and feasting journey through the 40 day sugar fast by Wendy Speak? Can y'all believe that? We are two weeks in, two weeks strong. You should stop and go ahead and give yourself a hand for sticking and staying for these two weeks. And I pray that um, the journey is much more rewarding for you now, that your focus is probably off of the sugar um, and you're more focused on the feasting with him and what you're getting out of that time with feasting for him. But let's jump on into day 14 and um, so that I don't hold you long. So day 14 is what else are you craving? What else are you craving? Our scripture reference for today is Psalm 139 um, verse 13 and it says, for you formed my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. You formed my innermost parts and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Um, Wendy starts out talking here about um, her when she uh, did her last 40 day sugar fast. Um, how halfway through the fast she mindlessly grabbed one of her kids um, her children's or she opened up her phone and she went into one of her children's um, apps on her phone and she started playing this game um, and she talked about how she sit around and before she knew it hours had passed and she had been on this game consumed in the game um, to the point to where when it was time to go pick her kids up from school, she realized she hadn't started dinner, she hadn't washed clothes, so everything that she needed to get done in the day um, didn't get done because she sit down to play a game, subtly sit down, open up her ki uh, app that her kids had on her phone and started playing this game and subtly got sucked in and her time got sucked away um, by sitting and playing the game. And she found that, you know, by the time it was time for her to go get her kids from school, she was a little short with them because she hadn't got what she needed to get done, done because the game had consumed so much of her time that day from getting what she needed to get done. Um, and then, long story short, she resorted. She went in the bathroom, you know, frustrated and trying to just get away from everything only to be sucked right back in to that same subtlety, that game that pulled her in. Um, and I just, when I was reading that, I thought about how sneaky and subtle uh, distractions are, you know, um, and, and how the enemy will set things in our way to get us distracted um you know and time and waste time and then he'll turn around and flip all of that and use that against us um with oh you didn't get this done and you didn't get that done and you didn't get that done um you wasted time or this or that he'll bring all kinds of stuff up to your head i told you he's a pervert and he likes to pervert things pervert things um when i first started uh reading this this page, uh, today's devotional, um, I was immediately reminded of the book um, by my favorite author. Lisa Turkers is my favorite author. Anybody that knows me knows I love anything Lisa Turkers writes, anything. She's my favorite author. And I was reflecting on her book, Made to Crave, um, when I was reading through this and um, when I saw the title, What Else Are You Craving? I immediately started thinking about the book Made to Crave because I read that before. And my mind went to the very line um, that Lisa stated in the book when I read it, not knowing that on page, what was it? On page 90 of this book that Wendy was going to reference the same thing that I was thinking about in my head. I was like, oh my goodness, because I went to find my book so that I could write out um, what 
what Lisa said. And Lisa says something like this in her book, Made to Crave, um, that God made us to crave the desire to desire eagerly, want greatly, and long for him. He made us to crave so, we, so we'd always desire him. But Satan, I told you, he, he, he tries to pervert everything good. He wants to put his hands on it, wants to get in it, and he wants to flip it. But Satan wants to do everything possible to replace our craving for God. Watch that, how he likes to replace our craving for God with something else. So, like I said, he likes to pervert everything. He, his whole, his whole, um, his whole agenda is he wants to get us out of our seat. We are seated in Christ Jesus. He jealous. He real. He big jealous of us. He got kicked out of heaven. Um, we, we and, and he's like, they make mistakes and they didn't get kicked out. He wants us out of our seat. So he does everything um, he can to try to get us to either walk away from God, choose to walk away from God, or uh, to get us to not believe God. So he'll throw everything at our faith to be like, God, do you believe God? Do you believe? Because he knows that faith pleases God. So if I can throw them out of believing God, um, they won't please God. So he's always looking for ways to to distract us, to disturb us, and to get us to deviate from walking in that path with God. And so she, Lisa says that um, the enemy will try to get us to replace our craving for God with something else. And that's basically what Wendy was talking about in this chapter. Um you know, we've been saying this from the start. I think we realized it probably about the second or third day that this is bigger than sugar. And we, we've been saying that this is, I found or we found that this is much bigger than sugar. We've been saying it over and over. And, you know, we probably at this two week point, we're probably at a place where, okay, I'm, I'm pretty good. I can do without the sugar. I can do without the sugar. The sugar is not on my mind, but even at the start of of this fast um, fasting and feasting journey, before we even got to, you know, anything, um, the guidelines and and before you fast was setting us up to say, hey, don't don't get rid of the sugar and then turn around and substitute it for something else like get rid of the sugar and go buy all types of sugar free stuff and load up on that. You know, don't substitute it. Um, we're sacrificing the sugar and we're drawing closer to the savior um and so she starts talking about these fillers and false fillers she starts talking about the false fillers and i was thinking about you know just fillers i was like you know some fillers you like like your girl my eyebrows are thin um i used to always get them you know plucked until they were the thinnest um and then Thin eyebrows went out and a more natural, like fuller brow came in. And um, so I feel mine in, you know, I think I do a pretty good job. So I like fillers when it comes to filling in my eyebrows. Um, but then I was thinking about where other fillers are and how I, I don't care about fillers too much in certain areas. So I thought about a crab cake and I love me a good crab cake a good lump crab with most crab in it crab cake um and i remember one time going out to eat and i ordered these crab cakes and i paid good money for them crab cakes and you you want you, the crab cake won't that about that big and pay good money to get two about that size only to be um disappointed because they had fillers in them you know a bunch of bread fillers i'm like I taste more filler than I taste the crab meat. And when she talks about these false fillers, um, it reminded me of the fillers in that crab cake. I wanted more of the, the meat, the crab cake, um, but I was tasting more of the false fillers. They put the filler in there to make the crab cake look bigger um, and to stretch out the crab meat so that they wouldn't have to use a whole bunch of crab meat you know, and then the customer gets shortchanged. So these false fillers. So 
you wouldn't like you wouldn't like to eat crab cakes that taste like more like bread than crab cakes or think of something else that you uh, fillers you just don't you don't get full off of fillers false fillers because they don't last they don't last um she says here uh that she hadn't turned she hadn't run to food to distract her after all she was fasting from sugar but she had not she had not turned to god i had crammed something new into my empty empty place sugar left behind i had consumed a new distraction and um, numbed my annoyance with a new medicine. And she asks us the question, have you found yourself doing the same, exchanging one false filler for another? Um, she goes on to say, I want to encourage you to look beyond your sugar addictions so that you can see what else might you might be running to. Now, I know that this probably is something that no, uh, none of us wanna hear. We're like, oh, we done gave up this, we done gave up that, but, um, I like how she paints this picture. I'm going to read it like she has it in the book because I just like how she paints this. She says, picture sugar as the doorway through which you invite the Holy Spirit to come into the private innermost places of your life. Imagine him now deep within your heart, looking around and taking inventory. See him smiling as he says, thanks for the sugar, but I want it all. What started as a sugar fast has potential to be so much more. Again, we've been saying it from the beginning, it's bigger than sugar. Um, now that that has been moved out of the way and Holy Spirit is, is, is being allowed to, um, being allowed to just move freely in us. Um, he's pointing out other things. That's an idol. That's an idol. He's cleaning house and we want him to clean house. And so you might be already starting to sense some other things that he's saying you're using that as a fit. That's a false filler too. That's a false filler too. Um, she said, I'm praying that God will give you the eyes to see other hidden idols in your life in the days ahead. Layer after layer, as you seek God in his word, allow him to convict you of other stuff you may be turning to. Other stuff that you may be turning to. Now, I know for me personally, there have been some things that I have felt him putting his finger on and I was hoping that he wouldn't touch, <laughs> um, but he has been touching them. Um, he's been giving me some, he's been giving me some time and, but I know that I'm going to be moving into another, uh, type fast at the beginning of the year, um, where I'm pulling away from things that are consuming a lot of my time. And this is not to say that you don't have a life, but things that are just sucking, sucking away your time, not just with God. Cause see, we exude God and we are with God when we are present with our families, when we are present with, um, others. And one of the things that I know, um, consumes me and can, and be, can become a replacement for the sugar for me is my phone, you know, um, and learning to just be present, um, with my family and present in the moment that's not to say i won't pull my phone out and take a picture or something like that but i'm talking about on my phone all the time you know how we do mindlessly scrolling um sending text messages shopping and amazon prime and everything i know i'm touching i know i'm touching on, on you yours too um you know running down this one and that one on YouTube channels, on, on in Instagram stories, uh, looking at everybody's inspirational posts and stories and sharing all of those. Like what, what else? What else is, is taken away, taken away from you being fully present? What takes away from you even witnessing um, and sharing God? We talked about it the other day when Jesus shares his food. What stops you from sharing Jesus food? What was Jesus food? My, He said, my food is to do the will of the father who sent me and finish and finish what he started and finish what he started. What keeps us from um, consuming the food, his food? and doing the will of the father you know with being just being present witnessing 
be in love and action does that is my phone taking up a lot of that time and, and space and what is it what else is what it is what else that's what that's what this chapter is talking about what else are you craving what else are you craving that calls you from the call on your life that calls you out of the place of being who you've been sent here to be um she talks about a minister andrew um bonar and him saying that fasting is abstaining from anything that hinders prayer um, anything that that pulls you away from God like it may not be food for you it might be television for you it might be games for you it might be little games game apps in your phone you know candy crush and I don't even know what type of games I, I just remember candy crush being out there at one time and, and a lot of people was on it it could be you know Amazon it could be sheen shine sheen whatever you call it it could be, you know, I don't know what it could be. It could be TV. Um, it could be social media. It could be the time that you spend on your phone. It could be a, a number of things. You know what Holy Spirit is saying to you or what else he's putting his finger on and saying, I want that too, and I want that too, and I want that too. Um, she says, if, if we, let me see what she says by that. If we want to experience his sustaining hand in our lives it may be a good idea to take a season to set aside anything that might be in our hands i already know it's coming so i'm getting myself prepared i already know it's coming another social media fast um another fa fast from my phone and when i say fast from my phone um he'll pull me into a season where it's like a sabbath rest and so i for a certain amount of hours of the day my phone is plugged up in another whole room um and i'm talking about extended hours where i don't touch my phone and then i get an allotted amount of time where i can spend on my phone so he's already dealing with me with some things that his finger is on and he is requiring me to give up in exchange for the greater that he wants to give me if that makes sense and so he gonna get my yes um she says that uh we abstain so that he might sustain and when i looked up the word abstain it said um to restrain from doing or enjoying something so we restrain from or um we should restrain from doing or running to what we normally run to to fill us so that he might sustain and it was so many rich definitions of sustain i pulled out a few some of them was strengthen or support um to uphold to withstand to provide and to establish the truth of so when i abstain when i restrain from doing and running to um doing things that used to fill me running to the false fillers god will sustain he will sustain he'll establish the truth of who I am. He'll establish the truth of who he is in me. He'll provide, he'll withhold, um, I mean, withstand and he'll uphold. So I thought that that was powerful too. Um, she goes on to say, this isn't about just about food. We don't just run to our pantries. We run to online games. We run to romance novels and we run to Starbucks too. Um, she goes on to say if we want our innermost uh, places filled to overwhelming overflowing sorry we've got to turn to god instead of food or other false fillers um she goes on and, and she also says something else i'm just reading now the one who made our core is the only one able to fill it and it goes right back to what she shares on the next page about Lisa Turker, how Lisa Turker said, God has made us to crave. Goes back to our scripture, you have made or created my inmost being. So he knows what, what's needed to fill us. He's made us to crave because he wants us to crave him. It's the pervert that comes in, the sick one, the subtle, sneaky one that tries to come in and flip everything. 
and take it out of its proper place. Um, one of our journal prompts, and I'll, I'll save that for later. I'm looking at the journal prompt. It's one of the questions that she asked us. Um, God is eager to rush into all the empty places we long uh, that we long to fill. God has the power to turn our hollow, hollow places into ha hallowed places. So he's he has the power to turn those empty spaces, those void spaces into holy spaces and holy places if we let them. First, we must recognize that the creator made us to crave him. And she goes on and references that same thing from Made to Crave by Lisa Turkers. She says this, and I'm ready to close. You might have picked this book up simply to help you as you detox your body. I urge you to not only offer God the food you consume, but also to offer him everything you turn you everything you turn to instead of him. Perhaps you turn to to those you like online rather than the one who loves you to the cross and back. Perhaps you run to the store when you could be storing up treasures in heaven. What do you turn to for satisfaction each, each time your inner, innermost being cries out for Jesus? The satisfied life, the satisfied life is yours for the taking if you want it. We can choose the satisfying life. It's, it's ours for the taking if we want it. But again, we ought to be intentional. We have to be intentional and focused in that's and going and get it. What started as a sugar fast can be so much more. And we've we we are experiencing that. I know I am. And I've talked to several of you, had the privilege of talking to several of you who um share that it's it's more than sugar for you too. Um, and what else do you need to surrender for the remainder of this fast? So that's going to be our journal prompts. Let me give us our journal prompts for today. Um, journal prompt number one is a, the question she asked in the book. Today, as you move deeper into fasting, ask yourself, is there anything else that I'm running to? Ask yourself and honestly take the time to answer, is there anything else that I'm running to? Is there anything else I'm running to? I, I checked the little, you know, you can get like a report as to how much time you spend on your phone, um, on my iPhone, and I checked it and I'm like, oh, I'm clearly running to this phone, clearly running to this phone, and we got to do something about that. Um, number two, what else do I need to surrender for the remainder of this fast? Ask Holy Spirit. What else do I need to surrender for the remainder of this fast? Um, and, and be ready to obey whatever you hear him say. Be ready to obey whatever you hear him say. Cravings. What else are you craving for? What else are you craving for? It's raining out here. It's dreary. And I'm going to be honest with y'all today. I'm craving uh, some hot apple pie and some ice cream but i ain't running to it because i don't even want to run out to the store and even still i'm not running to it um what else are you craving let's pray dear lord i know that sugar isn't the only thing i turn to when i could turn to you prick my heart with conviction in the days ahead as i consider what else it is that i'm running to instead of you you made me to crave you, but I need your help to set all my other cravings on the altar first. Humbly, Holy Spirit, I am asking for your help. Amen. Listen, happy two weeks. Happy day 14. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing and let's keep feasting on the word. And listen, do not be surprised as to what Holy Spirit is going to put his finger on and say, I want that too. I want that too, including these phones, including um, our time, a little more of our time. So y'all have a good one.